There are three topics that we need to know in this section. One of them is the mean, which means average. The other one is the median, we'll talk about it shortly. And the last one is the mode. We said the mean is the average. So how do you calculate the average for scores? Like if you, if you want to find your average in a class, what do you do? Don't you add all the values? And you divide that by what? The number of yep, the number of values. That's right. How many values do you have there? So for example, let's say, uh, ready? Never mind. Never mind. Yep. So let's say these are your scores. 70, 85, 92. You missed one, so you got a zero on it. The last one, you got a 74. These are your test scores. One, two, three, four, five test scores. Can we calculate the average? What's the mean or the average? Let's add them, that's 70 plus 85 plus 92 plus the zero plus the 74 all divided by five. So let's add them. 70 plus 85 plus 92 plus 74. So when you add them, that's 321. Divided by five, your average is, I need a calculator that will do that. There's a basic one, 321 divided by five equals 64.2. That's what the average is. I'll try another one. So that's one example. Your scores are 80, 90, 90, 86. What's your average? The mean is going to be 80 plus 90 plus 90 plus 86 divided by 4. That's 346 divided by 4. It's 86.5. You got a B plus. Let's add a couple more examples here, but let's put a twist in them. This is where a common question happens at the end of the semester. I might say to you, your grade for the course is going to be based on four scores, four exams. I'm going to average them, and that's your grade for the course. So the first three exam scores, you got a 70, 89, 84, and now you have one more score right here. We didn't take it yet. That's the final exam. And you're saying, I really want to get a B in the course. To get a B in the course, you need to make an average, have an average of what? Equals to 83. So what score here will give you an average of 83? So that's what we have for a problem. You already have three test scores, but we have one more exam. And at the end, I'm going to average these. And you're hoping to get at least 83 on that, because if you get 83, you get B in the course. So what is that minimum score that will give you a B in the course? 
Well, to find the average for these, you go I'll take the 70 plus the 89 plus the 84 plus that unknown. We'll call it x. I don't know what the value is. I'm looking for it. If I add them all and divide by 4, I want to get something at least 83. I want to get it to be 83 or higher. That's what I need. Well, we can add these three numbers, right? So, because we have three numbers, plus, plus, 70, plus, 89, plus, 84. What's that? That's 243. And how do you solve this equation? Oh. Notice I'm not a fan of fractions. So guess what the first thing I'm going to do? I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by what? To get rid of the 4. by 4 because I want to cancel that 4 so 243 plus x equals what's 83 times 4 332 notice that's an equation you want to solve it for x. You need to get rid of that 243, so you subtract 243 from this side. <coughs> and if you subtract 243, you've got to subtract 243 from that side. So you need a minimum of 89 on the last test to get a B in the course. That's your minimum score. If you score below 89, you're not getting the B. You score 89 or higher, yes, you get the B in the course. That's usually a common question we get at the end of the semester. What do I need to get on the next test to get that average, to get a 70, to get a 60, to get it past the course? So you can do that. It might not be three scores, it might be five. The process doesn't change. You add all the scores plus that unknown, you divide them by the number of the scores and say, I want it to be equal at least to that number, at least. The problem with this, we make in every test count exactly the same weight. 25% of the grade, 25% of the grade, 25% of the grade, 25% of the grade. That's not always the case. Like what? Like your GPA. Let's say you are taking four courses this semester. So you are taking, I'll give you some classes, English 1, English 101. And that is a three credit course. And you got an A minus in the course. We'll say A. We'll do A. I'm going to do A, B, and C. You are taking algebra 102. It's also a three credit course. And you got to be in that class. Sociology 211. That's a three credit course, and you got A in it. And now you're taking a hard class like chemistry, one, 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 that's four credits, not three, four, and you got a C in the course. And you're trying to find what your GPA is for that semester. Now keep in mind, an A is equivalent to 4.0 on GPA. A B is 3.0, a C is 2.0, a D is 1.0, and F is obviously a zero. So what you could do, I can actually make that a table. I have a ruler here? No. Okay. Let's look at this. Three credits, each one worth how many points? And A is worth what? Four points? So what is three times four? That's 12 points. 
for that English class. The algebra, it's a three credit, and each B is worth how many points? Three. Three times three, that's nine points. That's how we do your GPA on campus. Sociology, three credits, A, each one is four. Three times four, which is what? 12. And finally, the chemistry. It's four credits, but each one is worth how many points? Two. So you get eight points for that. Now we add to see how many points you got this semester. 12 and eight, which is what? 20, 29, 41 points. How many credits you got all together? Three and three? Six, three, nine, four, 13. Your grade point average GPA is going to be 41 divided by 13. And we always carry three decimal places. I don't know why, but we always do that. So you have a 3.154 GPA this semester. They're not equal. You don't just add them and divide because some worth more than others. This is four credits. That's three credits. Sometimes you take a lab, that's one credit. So you can't make them all equal. So that's the mean. I said there are three topics. So the mean is one of them, we covered it. The next one is what? The median. The median is defined as the number in the middle. But, be careful with that. If what? You gotta keep in mind the number in the middle after you arrange the value. So one thing to remember, make sure that the numbers are arranged. in numerical order, from small to large or large to small. If you don't arrange them, you're in trouble. You get the wrong answer. So make sure that the numbers are arranged in numerical order. So find the median of two, nine, eight, 15, and 24. I want to find the median. The number in the middle after you arrange them. So let's arrange them first from small to large or large to small, it doesn't matter. If you go small to large, what? 2, 8, 9, 15, 24. What's your median? The middle number. That's your middle number. How many to the left of it? Two. How many to the right of it? Two. So the median equals nine. Let's try another one. Five, 12, seven, 19, eight, and 20. What's the median? Arrange them first. Small to large, large to small. I go small to large. Five, seven, eight, 12, 19, 
20. Now, could the median be the 8? Could that be a median? No, why? It has 2 to the left and how many to the right? 3. That's not good. Could it be the 12? No, that has what? 3 to the left, 2 to the right. So neither one is the median. So what is the median? Why 10, Jamie? Correct. So you add them. You take the two middle ones, add them, and divide by 2. What's 8 plus 12? 20. Divided by 2, it is the 10. 10 is your median. So when you have an even number of values, you take the two middle ones, add them, and divide by 2. Notice if you look at the 10, how many numbers less than 10 on that list? 3. 1, 2, 3. How many numbers more than 10? 3. 1, 2, 3. You could have said 11 is median because it has 3 to the left, 3 to the right. But we try to be fair. Fair way is halfway between them. So all math book will take any number, like it'll take a number halfway between these two. How do you find the halfway? You add them and divide by 2. Could be a decimal number? Could be. Sure. Like I'll give you one. Like Jamie's asked, could it be a decimal value? I could even have some decimal numbers there, Jamie. I could have, what's the median of 2 .9, 3.2, 5.1, uh, 2.4, uh, 6.7, and um, 8.2. Let's put them in order. The smallest number is what? 2.4, then 2.9, then 3.2, then 5.1, then 6.7, 8.2. I'm going to take the two middle numbers, these two, add them and divide by 2. My median is going to be 3.2 plus 5.1, divide that by 2. That's 8.3 divided by 2, which is 4.15. And the 4.15 has three numbers to the left, three numbers to the right. So the answer, yes, you could have a decimal value. That's the median. And the last topic is the mode. So let me look at the mode. Mean, median, and mode. You might hear, by the way, the range, the word range. Range is what? The difference in the highest value and the lowest value. I don't think our book talks about them. But the range is the high minus the low if you ever see them. So I'll put it that there if you ever encounter that. The range is the high value minus the low value. So for this example, my highest number is what? 8.2. My lowest number is what? 2.4. My range of values, again, I don't think you'll see them in this book, is 5.8. if you encounter that. That's the range. <coughs> Let's look at the mode, the last one. Mode is the most frequent. So um, the number occurring most frequent.
which number showed up more often than the rest of the numbers. So let's take some examples and see. Here's an example. 8, 13, 9, and 2. These are the numbers. For the mean and the mode, you don't have to put them in order. But if you do, it doesn't make it wrong. So a safe bet, always put them in order, but I don't have to. Which number showed up more often here? Do you see a number that stands out? No. So this one has no mode. Another example. 7, 2, 5, 1, 2, 5, 2. What's the mode? Look again, Jamie. Which one showed up more often? Most. The two. Only the two. The two showed up three times. The five only showed up twice. You could have more than one mode, by the way. Like this. The nine, one, zero, four, nine, four, one, five, nine, four. I see a lot of nines. How many times the nine show up? Three times. The four. Three times. The five ones. The one, two. So we have how many modes? We have two modes. The four and the nine. We don't take them and add and divide by two. Nope. I'm saying which number or numbers showed up more often or most often, most frequent. Yeah, they could, you, see, you could see that. Like this one is known as bimodal. Bi means two, has two modes. Sometimes you have three modes, three numbers. Sometimes none, sometimes ones. So you could have more than one mode. And if, if there's more than one mode, they'll say write them separated with the comma. So you write the first one, the four, comma, then you put the other one, the nine. That little fine print they give you, you know, that little blue print next to the question, they'll tell you how to write the answer. And these are the topics in that chapter. And that's the whole section, the whole chapter.